Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction into who I am, what I do and then what I'm going to be sharing on this channel. So I'm Luke and I'm a full-time artist and I've been drawing in pen and ink on location for the last five years. Before that I was a designer and that's where I really built up the foundation of my drawing skills. This is a long time in the making, so I'm glad I'm finally sharing my work on YouTube because it gives me the opportunity to really go into more detail, break down the processes and techniques and slow things down. We can all just take our time and learn. So that's the intention. So in this series, I'm going to be looking at perspective drawing. The reason I'm looking at perspective drawing is that it's the foundation of my ability to draw. And I believe that without a true understanding of perspective, uh, linear perspective, then you're going to struggle, really. And I think a lot of people struggle because they don't know the rules in perspective drawing and they just put it down to them not being able to do it when actually it is a skill you can learn. I do believe that everyone can draw and I will try my best to prove it. I know a lot of you will be quite confident in your drawing skills. Maybe you're studying studying architecture or interiors and you just wanna brush up on your skills or maybe learn from scratch. So yeah, these videos will hopefully help all different kinds of people from all different backgrounds and yeah, hopefully just spread my passion for drawing so when I initially set out to make these videos um, with the hope of explaining perspective drawing, sharing my knowledge on perspective drawing, I found it a little bit too daunting because I was trying to think, okay, well, how do I explain absolutely everything that I know to everyone, which is difficult. So instead I've looked at how I learned, how did I learn perspective drawing? How did I learn to draw? So these series of videos will be focused on that. So the way I learned to draw was very intuitively. I was playing with perspective. I wasn't reading through textbooks, understanding it, and then drawing. So we're going to go through a really brief overview of perspective drawing. Then we're going to look at some exercises that you can all do to intuitively learn. The first video that I'm going to be sharing is an overview of one point, two point, and three point perspective. These are all methods of linear perspective. I think it's really helpful to just run through an overview of these three different methods because they're the core methods in linear perspective drawing. Once you have an understanding of all three, that frees up so many possibilities in terms of your understanding of three-dimensional space. And then you can apply that to your own work. So let's go ahead and do that. Hi everyone, so let's draw in perspective. To do that, you need to understand it. So this is designed to give you an overview of perspective drawing. I'll be looking at one point, two point and three point perspective all in this video. I'm going to start by drawing a cube. This cube will be drawn as a transparent shape because it's really important that we see through the shape to fully understand what's happening to all the lines that make the cube. So the cube itself is formed of three parallel sets of lines. And these sets of parallel lines are really important in understanding these three different methods of perspective drawing. So let's just show those lines here. So we have one set of horizontal parallel lines shown in blue, the other set shown in red, and then we have the vertical set shown in green. Each parallel set of line will behave differently dependent on which method we'll be drawing in. Okay, so without perspective, how would we view this cube? It would be simply viewed as a square. So this really doesn't represent the experience of the cube. Let's think about one point perspective to begin with. Perspective drawing is all about capturing a particular viewpoint or experience. You're trying to show a three dimensional shape on a two dimensional plane. So let's think about this figure's perspective. This person is looking at the cube fairly front on. The direction of sight is perpendicular to the front face of the cube. Now direction of sight is really important because it effectively decides whether you use one point, two point, or three point perspective. To begin our one point perspective, I want you to draw in the horizon line. The horizon line is a really important element in perspective drawing, and it's constant between these three methods. But we'll go into much more detail on the horizon line further on in the drawing series. Now, in a one point perspective, as you might have guessed, there's one vanishing point. So go ahead and draw that in on the horizon line. 
Your vanishing point is where all of your lines under the influence of perspective will converge. We know that the main effect of perspective is that when things are closer towards us, they appear larger than when they're further away. So we know that the back face of the cube will appear smaller than the front face of the cube. So we've gone ahead and drawn our back face of the cube in, and now we have to draw our larger front face. It's really important to understand that the set of parallel lines under the influence of perspective in this drawing are the only ones that will be drawn diagonally. So knowing that, we can go ahead and draw in the front face of the cube, knowing that we'll only need horizontal or vertical lines. Okay, so you can go ahead and draw in the bottom line, which represent the bottom front edge of the face of the cube closest to us. So after we've drawn that horizontal line depicting the front bottom edge of the cube, we can use vertical lines because we know they'll be vertical to go straight up to those diagonal lines. From there, we can draw another horizontal line connecting the two verticals at the intersection of the diagonals. So there's a really simple, quick overview of one point perspective. So let's move on to two point perspective. This method is great because it enables us to draw two sets of parallel lines under the influence of perspective. So now I've gone ahead and drawn in a figure for our two-point perspective viewpoint. Let's think about this person here, how they're viewing the cube and how they're going to experience. Now, with a one-point perspective, this would be a really limiting method to draw this particular viewpoint. The reason being is because now we have two sets of parallel lines that are leading away from the viewer that means we have to introduce a second vanishing point. So as with the one point perspective, we begin with the horizon line. So let's go ahead and draw in the horizon line. As we know, it's a flat line depicting the horizon. Now we've drawn our horizon line, we can go ahead and draw in our two vanishing points. Two point perspective refers to the two vanishing points, as in one point referred to the one vanishing point. So once we've drawn in our two vanishing points, we know that one set of parallel lines will be leading to the left vanishing point, and the other set of parallel horizontal lines will be leading to the right vanishing point. And that's at the core of two-point perspective. To begin drawing this cube, we can go ahead and draw in the front vertical edge of the cube. From this front edge of the cube, we can see that there's two faces and they're skewed. So they're leading away from us and they're leading towards the horizon line and therefore towards their individual vanishing points. To complete the cube, we simply draw in construction lines connecting the vanishing points to the top and bottom of that vertical edge. Now we can go ahead and draw in the vertical line that completes the one right side face of the cube. So now we can use that face of the cube to construct the rest of the cube. So let's go ahead and draw our construction lines from that face of the cube towards the vanishing point. It's important to remember that in all perspective drawing, parallel sets of lines lead towards the same vanishing point. So using that knowledge, we can actually easily complete this cube. There's no particular way to go about constructing a cube. As long as you understand the different connections and the different rules, you can complete the full cube in that particular method. So that's the cube drawn in two-point perspective. So the advantage of learning two-point perspective is it gives us freedom to move around the cube along the horizontal plane, and we can pivot around the cube and capture it from any angle, provided our direction of sight is only moving on a horizontal plane. Three-point perspective is needed when your direction of sight changes on the vertical plane. So you're either looking up or you're looking down, for our third figure, don't ask me why, I've drawn a tree. Anyway, so he's climbed the tree and he's looking down on the cube. If he's looking down on the cube, we know that the vertical parallel set of lines will be leading away from us. We're then changing the angle of our direction of sight on a vertical plane. That means we need to introduce a third point. Now, the third point is essentially where the vertical lines will be leading off into the distance. Probably worked it out by now, but the vanishing points on the horizon line are for the horizontal parallel sets of lines. So we need a third one for the vertical set of lines. Go ahead and draw that in as low down as you can on the page. Okay, so you can see here that we have a vertical line representing that front edge of the cube. 
So from there, as we would in a two-point perspective, we can use our construction lines to draw back to the vanishing points. However, in a two-point perspective, we knew that the vertical lines remained vertical, whereas now we know that they lead towards a third vanishing point. So go ahead and draw in a vertical line, this time leading towards the vanishing point. Now we've drawn one face of the cube in three point perspective, we can use the corners of that face to draw back to the vanishing point to help construct the rest of the cube. We'll need another vertical here. We know that all vertical lines lead to the third point. So go ahead and draw in those vertical lines leading to the third point. So that's our cube in a three point perspective. So I think now would be a good time to have a recap on what we've learned today. I know it's a lot to take in, so let's just go through it in a really simplified version. So one point perspective is quite simple in respect that you only have one set of parallel lines under the influence of perspective, i.e. one set of parallel lines are leading away from you. Two point perspective, we have our original set of lines in the one point that are leading away from us, but on this one there's an additional set leading to the left. So that's why we have two vanishing points to represent those parallel lines leading away from us into the distance. So in three point perspective, not only are the horizontal parallel lines leading away from us, but also the vertical lines as we have changed our direction of sight and we're looking down on the cube. That's why the third point is introduced. So it's important to understand that these three methods enable a freedom they enable you to move around the cube and change your direction of sight and have the ability to portray that experience. So that was an overview of perspective drawing and I'm hoping that that will give you exactly that. So it's not meant to be an in-depth understanding of those three methods. But before I go into the individual exercises that I think will give you a more intuitive way of learning, I just thought it'd be really helpful to give you the three core methods of linear perspective and the advantages of learning all three. So here's Robin sat on the bench this morning. I know lots of you will be upset if she's not featured in a video. So here she is sitting pretty on the morning walk. I hope you've all found the video helpful and I look forward to sharing more content in this perspective drawing series. As soon as the next exercises are available, I'll include the cards at the end of this video so you can click straight through to keep on learning.